Hello, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to find the x-intercepts of the following cubic function. So first of all, what are x-intercepts? So pretend we have a graph. Uh, this looks, well, that's actually more of an absolute value graph. But pretend we have some function here. This would be like a quadratic. I know this is cubic, but it really doesn't make a difference. I'm just trying to give you a different perspective. The x-intercepts will be the locations, or the, the coordinates, okay, or the x-values, you can say, of these points where the function crosses the x-axis. Okay, remember the x-axis is always the horizontal, the y, or the function's value is generally the uh, vertical axis. So now it turns out that you do know something very unique about these two points, right? You actually know the y value or the function's value of those two points. You don't know what the x is, but you do know the y value zero. You don't know what the x is, but you do know the y value zero, that point. Now that's the key critical understanding uh, that we need in order to kind of really approach this problem that when you're finding the x-intercepts, the y value or the function's value is gonna be equal to zero. Now I know this problem isn't about x, uh, y intercepts, but the opposite would be true for the y intercepts, right? You would know something about the uh, point here. You don't know the y value, but you would know that the x value is zero, okay? So you can kind of remember that, right? If you're finding x intercepts, remember it's the locations or the values of x that make the function zero. If you're trying to find the y intercepts, it's gonna be the uh, y value uh, in which makes the in which case the x values are zero. All right. Now, what we're going to do? Take the zero value and plug it in for f of x. Okay, because that's what it means. So zero is going to be equal to two x cubed minus x squared minus eight x plus four. Okay. Now, when you're trying to factor a cubic function, what we need to do is we have to learn how to frame the problem. Okay. Now, generally speaking, there's more than one way to to do this. Right? There's more than one way probably to group things. There's more than one method to do it. I mean, there's so many methods. Okay, The way I like to view it is I like to break this up into two parts where I aggregate okay, the highest two uh, power values of the variable, and I like to aggregate the lowest two, okay, meaning the term here with an x and the term without an x. Now, if you notice... If you might say, well, wait a minute, is this all of a sudden now multiplied? It wasn't multiplied before. They were added together, and I'll say, yes. All I'm going to do is just move this to the right, and I should have circled that minus sign as well. That should have traveled along with it, and I'll put a little plus sign in there, okay? Because when you add a negative 8x to something, it's the same thing as subtracting 8x, right? And when you add a positive 4, it's the same thing as, I don't know, adding positive 4, right? So that's all good. Now, what we need to do here is we have to begin to factor this equation. So this is how we break it up. And now what I'm going to start to do is think about how to factor what's inside of those parentheses. So what I do is I look to my two terms in those parentheses, and I say to myself, what's the highest common factor amongst them? And I realize that x squared is the highest common factor, right? So if I pull out an x squared from this term, it becomes just 2x. And if I pull out an x squared from this, it becomes a 1, right? And the minus sign just stays there. Okay. It's not a zero, by the way, right? It's not a subtraction. It's basically division. All you got to think about is divide x squared by both, right? And that's how you factor it on out. That's how you get this little binomial here. So now let's do the same thing for the uh, second one. Okay. Now let's do plus. Let's open the parenthesis. Okay. Let's close the parenthesis. And what do you notice we kind of have uh, in here? Well, I noticed that I have a the highest factor uh, in this case would be a four, right? Amongst both. So I'll, I'll write 4 there. This term now is going to be negative uh, 2x, right? Negative 2x. And then this term is going to be just plus 1. All right, great. Now, the whole goal of this factoring is to find common factors amongst each of these two terms in parentheses. Now, if you notice, take a look. This term and this term are almost match, <laughs> right? They almost match. If you notice, it's like, well, this is positive 2x, this is negative 2x, this is negative 1, and this is positive 1. They're so close, except they're like negatives of one another, yes? So what I can do is I can pull out a negative 1 for either term, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to pull out a negative 1 term from, let's say, this one, okay? So what's going to happen here? Follow me with this. So I'm going to now factor this, and I'm going to pull out a negative 1. In other words, I'm going to pull a negative 1 out of the first term. Okay, so I'm going to write negative 1. 
And it'll pull out a negative one from this term. So that means basically if you divided this by negative one, wouldn't that be a positive now 2x, right? Negative 2x divided by negative one, negative divided by negative is a positive. So that becomes 2x, just positive. And then if I were to now think about, let me just go in here and erase this. If I now divide the second term by negative one, positive one divided by negative one is a negative one, right? Positive divided by a negative is a negative. So this becomes now minus one. And look, looky here, they're now the same, okay? So everything now will come down with it, okay? So now I gotta bring the four over here, right? I'm gonna close in the parenthesis, great. I'm just gonna copy everything now. Zero is gonna be equal to, let's copy this whole thing, okay? Copy, and great. All right, now, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because it's really like saying four times a negative one and then that whole thing times this parentheses all right, so I can combine these two, okay? I'm just gonna clean it up to make it a negative four overall, okay? Just to clean it up, it looks like too many parentheses to me. All right, cool. And now I'm gonna get rid of that other parenthesis there. All right, now, since we have common factors now amongst these two terms, I can now factor out the factor, right? I can factor out the factor. Now, how do we do that? Now, this one looks a little more complicated because it's parentheses, brackets all over the place. But the main idea is this. What you're going to do is you're going to put... So let me copy this for a second without that arrow. One second. Copy. Okay, cool. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this term out of the first and I'll pull this term out of the second. And I'm just going to write them over one another. I'm going to try to almost superimpose them. I know they're not perfect, but I'm pulling both out, Okay. What then is left, what you're going to plug into this parenthesis now, is going to be what's exactly left over. Okay? You're going to write now x squared plus a negative 4. Okay? And anytime you add a negative number, isn't that the same thing as just subtracting, right, the number? Yes. So I'm going to clean that up just a little bit. So this now is fully factored. Okay? And I'm going to make this a little neater. All right? So this is just x squared minus 1. And that's how you would do it. This is going to be, uh, sorry, uh, what did I say? 2x minus 1. Okay, so now let's go back up here. Let's erase this, and we're going to move this on up. Now, the reason why I like this, and this looks great now, is because I realize I can now begin to find the values of x that will make this side go to 0. Why? Well, because if this term inside of here goes to 0, or if I can make, if I can find an x value here, that makes this side of the, uh, or this part of the equation become zero, then zero times whatever the heck this thing is, I could care less what it is, it's gonna be zero, right? And that's gonna be a true mathematical statement. So not only do I want this thing, or to find out when that's equal to zero, but I also want to find when this thing is equal to zero as well, okay? Because again, if this thing goes to zero, I could care less what this is, this could be 14,978,222, and it doesn't matter, it's still zero. So how do we now do that algebraically? Well, we can set these two equations up now. We can say x, 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. And we can also say now x squared minus 4 is equal to 0, right? Now we can solve these. Watch. Add 1 here. This becomes 2x is equal to 1. If you divide out 2 from both sides, you're going to realize x is equal to a half. And if you were to plug in a half in here for x, Half times 2 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and this whole bad boy is going to 0, okay? Same thing over here. You can do that. You can do this a whole bunch of ways, right? You can do this by actually using a quadratic program in the calculator. You can do this by using a, uh, uh, finding the binomials, right? It's a perfect square. So you can do plus 2 and minus 2 equals 0. You can do all that stuff, the quadratic, right? Or uh, what you can do is you can just add 4 to both sides, and realize that you can square root both sides then, and x will equal then 2. Square root of 4 is 2, but it's really plus and minus 2. All right, you get a positive and negative, because if you go back, right, what can x be in order for this whole thing to go to uh, become 0? Well, if x is 2, that's pretty easy. 2 squared is going to be 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. If x is negative 2, then negative 2 squared is actually positive 4, and positive 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So you really have three values. You have x being equal to negative 2, x being equal to positive 1 half, and then x being equal to 2. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Those are the x-intercepts. That's it. Those are the values, right? Now, if you're like, oh, yeah, I understand the method, but 
you know, I'd, I'd love to see it. I mean, this I understood, but then you lost me with all this, these letters and numbers on the page. We'll go to your calculator, right? Hit Y equals. Plug in your function, 2X raised to the 3, okay? Hit the over a button, minus then X squared, minus 8X, plus 4. All right. Now, I'm going to go to zoom standard, zoom then 6, and you're going to get a graph. Look at this. Let's bring it in, okay? This is what the this is the picture of what the math function up here looks like, right? If you had to plot all the points, if you could plot all the points for x and their corresponding y values, this is the beautiful picture that comes about. Now look, right? This is where it crosses the x-axis, this is where it crosses the x-axis, and this is where it crosses the x-axis. We can kind of see now, right, what's the value of this point? Well, the coordinate is going to be negative 2, comma, 0. We said that the y value should always be 0, and the x value is going to be negative 2. That's what we said algebraically. How about this one? Well, that's in between these two tick marks. Every tick mark represents 1, so that's going to be equal to 1 half. You might say, how do you know that's exactly a half? That's a great question. You're not going to get it from the graph, I'll tell you that, by just looking at it. Okay? You might think it's close to a half. Maybe it looks like a half, but you don't know that for certain by just looking at it. And this is going to be equal to 2. Right? So you can clearly see how we're coming up with those values. I mean, it makes sense pictorially now. There they are. Right? And if you're not convinced that that's a half, what you can do then is go to your table. Watch. So I'm going to back out all this stuff. Okay? Hit second table. All right? Now what it says is you, it says you can press. Now this table is incremented by units of one, right? One, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. And what you see here on this picture is you see that we have two of the values. We have this. Remember, the x-intercepts are found when y is equal to 0. So we have two zeros on here, okay? Right? Negative 2 and positive 2. That's what we said it should be. But you know what the table misses? The table's going to miss this one now, the 1 half, because I don't have half increments, right? So you got to be careful when you use the table, ladies and gentlemen, all right? You might use the table here and be like, oh, great, I got my answer, only two intercepts, voila, and but yet there's three, so to see that missing one, well, first you would probably look at the graph, okay? And then you would have realized that I should have had three answers. Oh boy, I did something wrong. All I got to do now is when you're in the table, go to press the plus button. And this will tell you, this says delta table or change in table. Or this is going to be your increment for your x values. I don't want to increment it by 1. I want to increment it by 0.5. Now hit enter. And now they're all incremented by 0.5. And take a look. I don't know if I can get them all. Oh, yeah, I did. All right. We got them all on the screen. So now you're going to see that hidden value. Okay. Now, this, though, is where the benefit, you know, the benefit here, there's a 0.5 and the 0, right? The benefit of doing the algebra is you're going to find these values kind of no matter what. Okay. If you use a table, you're not necessarily going to find them if, um, unless you have the right increment. Okay. You should, though, be able to do both. And you can use that calculator to check it out. But that's all it is. I hope this video helped, guys. And if it did, and girls, by the way, right? When I say guys, I just mean everyone, but guys and girls, um, I do hope uh, I do hope this helped. And if it does, give us a hand if you don't mind. All right, like, subscribe, hit those buttons. But even more importantly, tell some of your classmates, tell some of your friends. All right, we don't only cover math; we cover physics, chemistry as well. We got a whole lot of other stuff coming out. We already have thousands of videos out there. Um, so, you know, we can definitely help you through more. If you love the approach that we took here, I would certainly hope that you'd love the rest of what we offer. Take care.